Coach, welcome back. Another episode of In the Crease Podcast brought to you by Baptist Health. Hanging out after a W. It's got to be a good feeling. <laughs> it always feels a little bit better on these Tuesdays, uh, yeah. you know, with a, with a win under our belt. And certainly in, in the fashion that we did it on the road, it was uh, a, a, big, a big one for us. And I think a, a one that we can build off of going forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, from, from the East Coast here, as you guys were battling out there in the mountain time zone, it really impressive effort out there. The defense was locked in, at least from where I sit. Three goals allowed to Utah, a team that gave us some trouble here a year ago. Uh, you know, eight goals from the offense. Only needed that many. Yeah. Um, so, so just talk me through the effort. Yeah, unique game. You know, I think yeah, we, we fell behind 1-0 after the first quarter, but we were getting a lot of opportunities. And uh, shooting percentage has been a number we've looked at as a coaching staff over the past few weeks, and we still have to improve on that. I think that's still a stat that we take a lot of pride in and we practice a lot, and unfortunately it hasn't showed its face on game day. But um, the fact that we're getting those opportunities, that we were able to generate that much offense, we went into the second quarter feeling really confident. And um, I thought we made some, some early stops. Uh, Nate Cap did a great job for us at the faceoff X to give us confidence that we were going to be able to compete. And defensively, um, just the attitude that we portrayed uh, on Saturday, I was really proud of. I thought the guys uh, were disappointed with the efforts at Navy. I think they were really honest with one another throughout the week. And I thought you saw those results uh, come game day on Saturday. You know, some, some notable performances. Um, we've talked about them a couple times. Connor Shears, you know, sort of the captain of that back line, unofficially. Yeah. Um, you know, just speak about how his value to this point. Yeah, just the way he plays the game. You know, Connor plays with a speed that we just haven't seen here before, and he always plays that way. Whether it's at practice or games or conditioning, he always is playing at a level that I think brings the people around him with him. And I think between him and Colin Hinton and Jack Heed, playing as a unit for the first time in that game, uh, we really saw this continuity that we hadn't seen prior. And, you know, when you move a guy like Dixon Smith up to the pole, again, you just feel confident in whoever's out there. So uh, any guy that was out there during the game, we felt like they could make a play. And athletically, I don't know if we've ever been that long, that rangy, that, that physically uh, imposing before on that, on that unit. And you felt it. You felt it in the, in the penalty box, for sure. Uh, we certainly had our share of penalties, but uh, they were penalties of, uh, uh, you know, commission instead of omission. And I think when we're playing that hard, we're going to be man down, and that's okay with us. But physically, uh, we brought an intensity that we just haven't had the past few weeks. A guy that's, that's sort of dealt with some frustration throughout the year that, that, that broke through, got two big goals, Jeremy Winston. Just talk about him being able to shake off a couple tough outings and, and have a day like that. Yeah, I think Jeremy's his own toughest critic, and I think yeah. he knows that his shooting percentage wasn't a reflection of how he was playing in practice. And, you know, our message to him was simple. You just got to keep going. You know, they're going to fall. And uh, Jeremy had two big goals for us in two really unique ways. And, you know, we see it, him do it in practice every week. And I think that for us, it wasn't ever a concern of, of, of if, but when. And, uh, you know, for him to get two goals in a big game like that and for him to, you know, just remind himself how, how talented he could be was big for our offense. You know, it, the offense continues to spread it around. A lot of different contributors once again. Um, all the usual suspects. And, but is there anyone who um, sort of stood out to you out at Utah? Yeah, you know, when, anytime you, you generate goals from different areas of the field, that's when you know you're, you're able to be consistent on the offensive end. I, I think when you rely on one or two guys, that's when you start to, um, you know, constantly watch them and expect them to make plays. But, you know, Nate Cap scoring a goal was big for us. Um, not only because it's a face-off goal and it's a momentum goal, but he had three shots in the Utah game last year that he didn't score on. And I think that those goals for him are going to build his confidence and just his belief in what he can do off the face-off X. Um, Cooper Trapetta was able to have another goal. Uh, Curtis Goddard, uh, two freshmen for us that scored goals in the first half, that gave us that breathing room to continue to be really aggressive defensively. And then obviously Jack Dolan's always gonna get his in transition and he took advantage of that. Troy Hedinger as well. I mean, you know, when you're chipping in from all different areas of the field, I think there's just a collective um, confidence in the group. And, and we've, we've seen that balance. And when you're not getting goals from Evan Tyler and you're not getting goals from your attack, we had zero points from the attack, you can lean on other people on your team. And uh, that's, I think, a mark of a, of a true team and something we have to build off of. So building off of a, a, an impressive victory on the road, you get to come home and, you know, no big deal. You have the number one team in the country and Duke coming to town on Sunday yeah. afternoon at 3 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, be able to see it on ESPN Plus with our buddy Ray Carnicelli on the call. Uh, preview that matchup for us. Duke's no stranger to this program. It'll be our 11th 
uh, matchup with those guys, but uh, you know, and their all-time head coach. But you know, to speak to that 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 opportunity. You guys yeah, this weekend. it's exactly that. You know, I think for us to be able to come back, uh, we've been on the road since February 10th uh, to play a home game, to play in front of our fans, to play on our field, something that we haven't been able to, to experience in a while, uh, and then to play, you know, the dream team. You know, it's really uh, what they've done in the transfer portal, what they've done with the recruiting. I mean, the amount of fifth-year seniors they have, guys from Princeton and guys from, you know, All-Americans last year that transferred in. I mean, what a special group to watch. I think for us, um, obviously we're excited to play Duke, but we also are so focused on the development of this team. And I think that's what happened after Navy is we stopped worrying so much about the opponent and the, the schematics plan. And we got to become a better lacrosse team, a better, a better program, a better culture, a better individual uh, performer. I mean, th those are the things that we focused on going into Utah and it, it allowed us to just be about us. And I think that's going to be the same message going in this week. And uh, nobody's going to ignore the, the hoopla that comes with the, the number one team. And I think there's going to be a lot of people here. And that's all going to be well and great. But ultimately, um, our chance right now, a year ago, to play against Duke and to see where we were at and to see the growth between last year and now, uh, I think you're going to see a really tough group defensively. I think you're going to see some guys on the offensive end that are trying to prove themselves. Uh, I think you're going to see Jason Yoquino, who's who's motivated to prove that he's a guy that can compete at this level. Um, Nathan Cap, who's motivated to prove that he can be a top faceoff man at this level. Um, a, a defensive midfield crew that uh, has a chip on their shoulder, and that's how they play. Uh, that's what we're excited about: is, is having our guys prove their worth a little bit and, and we'll, we'll have a chance to do that three o'clock on Sunday against a lot of in front of a lot of people and it's 80 degrees and sunny I don't, yep. I don't know if it gets any better than that oh absolutely how how maybe you haven't thought about it even for a second how odd is it that they're coming down really close to the exact almost exactly a year ago to when things kind of got weird <laughs> Uh, yeah, because we, they were the last opponent in 2020. Yep, and uh, that game didn't go the way you wanted it to mm -hmm. on March 10th, and then you, you know just when you're thinking, okay, let's move on and get ready, and, and things shut down, and now here you are, a year removed from that, and, and you've got Duke coming to town again. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 almost like this, uh, you know, uh, kind of a hallmark story when you look at the big picture. Sure, right? you look at March 10th, 2020, um, playing lacrosse, maybe taking it for granted at the time, maybe uh, expecting that the next game was going to be available to a year later where you know things can get taken away from you really quickly and you know that tomorrow is not guaranteed in college athletics and uh, for our guys there's an expiration date. For a lot of our guys they thought that last year was that last game. You know, uh, Evan Tyler didn't know if he was going to play Duke again. And for us, I think that's what's really unique, that we have this, this second chance. And, and that's how we're treating it. And, you know, um, you know we, we joke. We, we, we try to have a motto for every week. And I know the new Jets coach motto is, is, is all gas, no brakes. And, and we shared that with our team this morning. I mean, why, why be worried about anything else? You don't know if there's going to be another game. And we get to just play the game of lacrosse. It's going to be beautiful out. The number one team in the country, uh, the, uh, we have no expectations but to go out and be the tougher team. And uh, that's our expectation as a program. So that'll be really fun. What are some keys for the weekend? What are the, what are the points of emphasis for the guys? You, you talked about the shooting percentage and trusting your sticks. I heard you say this morning in practice. Yeah. Um, just, what are some keys for the guys? Yeah, I think we have to attack them in unsettled times. You know, that's how we, we scored early on against Navy. I think that's how we got a few in Utah. And, um, you, you know, we always joke, you, you can't try to outbench a 250-pounder if you only bench 200. You know, and we have to find unique ways to create disadvantage situations. And that's in transition. That's in man up. That's in um, the face-off game. And then we also have to be able to be really disciplined on our defensive end. I think that we do have a unit down there um, that can compete. And I don't know if anybody can compete with Duke for 60 minutes. I think uh, that's been proven. Uh, but we have to find ways to win individual battles and then also be able to change the pace of the game throughout on the defensive end. And uh, when you have you know, the Twarton winner and the, the consensus number one PLL draft player and Michael Sowers, I think you, you have to challenge your guys that um, you know, this is an opportunity to, to make your name. And Colin Hinton knows that, Connor Shears knows that, Jason Aquino knows that, and they're going to have a chance to answer that question uh, on Sunday afternoon. And that's really the makeup for any team that achieves an upset. This is March. Yeah. <laughs> uh, upset's about to be at front of mind here for yeah. the college basketball fan, but um, you know, you just described the formula for how upsets occur. So yeah. uh, it's an exciting time for the program and uh, certainly uh, a matchup we're looking forward to. Um, to wrap things up here, 
you know, you've talked about all these different guys. Jason Oquino, you quickly mentioned him. Just want to talk about his effort real quick uh, up, in, up in Utah. Yeah, you know, it's uh, always a tough thing to come in and, and, you know, to be given the starting spot. I mean, we had a great competition last week. Adam and Jason had played the best lacrosse I've seen them play here this year, and it really came down to the wire. I mean, we really couldn't make a decision until Thursday afternoon, and ultimately we felt like Jason had uh, earned the opportunity to prove himself on game day, and um, he only faced six shots. You know, I think that was a, a credit to the defense, uh, taking a lot of pride in protecting him, and uh, when he was asked to, to step up, he did, and he made some great saves and really poisoned the clearing game. And uh, this is a different animal on Sunday, and I think that that opportunity for him is exciting. That he's going to be able to prove himself. He did it against North Carolina in the second half. He he did it for a full game against Utah, and now he gets to do it out of the starting gates against Duke at our home fields. And I, I know for him, this is a, a really unique opportunity that's been a, a long time coming. Anything you want to close us out with as we head into a big weekend? No, I mean, you know, again, to think that we're going to be able to have fans at our game, we're going to be able to host the number one team in the country. Um, it's going to be Sunday at 3 o'clock when there's not much other lacrosse going on. I think that we have to stop uh, consuming ourselves with the worries of a game like this and just all gas, no breaks. And it's going to be an exciting week for him. Well, I appreciate the time, Coach, and, and thanks for hanging out with us. We're looking forward to a big weekend, and uh, go Dolphins. I appreciate it. Thanks, Matt.